Hi students, Santosh here. Today I am going to deliver the lecture on stitching of concrete pavement and which is very useful for practical highway engineers to repair the cracks which are developed on pavement quality concrete. So this is very important lecture as far as maintenance of concrete pavement is concerned. So let us start this lecture. and I am requesting you to watch this lecture till the end to get the ideas clear regarding stitching of concrete. First of all, we are already discussed in our previous lectures PQC cracks regarding PQC cracks. The development of surface cracks in pavement quality con concrete is due to temperature difference, late joint cutting and defective curing of PQC. The cracks will allow water, mud, debris going into the cracks and widen them further. Shrinkage means reduction in volume is another common reason for the cracking. As concrete hardens and dries, it shrinks. The chemical reaction which causes the concrete to go from liquid or plastic state or a solid state requires a water. So this chemical reaction or hydration continues to occur for a days, weeks after you pour the concrete and it also causes the development of cracks. Regardless of quality of pavement material and design, increase in the vehicular traffic and changing environmental conditions will reduce the service life of pavement which ultimately results in the failure of pavement. Cracking is the most common feature of the rigid pavement and fatigue cracking considered as a major cause for failure of rigid pavement. So we should observe the cracking very carefully and <coughs> develop the various techniques to <coughs> reduce these cracks. The structural cracks are classified according to their severity which are defined in terms of the width of crack. If width of the crack is up to 0.5 mm, it is considered as a narrow crack and it is assumed that full aggregate interlock and full load transfer is taking place within the slab at the crack. So narrow cracks <coughs> when the width of the crack is less than 0.5 mm, when width of the crack is in between 0.5 mm to 1.5 mm, it is considered as a medium crack and it is assumed that there is a partial aggregate interlock and partial load transfer is taking place within the slab at the crack. These types of cracks permit the ingress of the water and which is very dangerous. Then third category is wide cracks. If the width of the crack is greater than 1.5 mm, it is considered as a wide crack and is it is assumed that there is no aggregate interlock and no load transfer taking place within the slab at the crack. This type of cracks permits ingress of water as well as, as, well as five detritus. So <clears throat> the narrow cracks okay but when narrow cracks are going to become medium cracks we have to observe that cracks very carefully and repair urgently and when it becomes a wide crack then there is no structural significance of these cracks and it is very difficult to repair these cracks okay. But there are certain techniques to repair these cracks and we have to follow that techniques. Then Failure or types of cracks, failure of concrete pavement or different types of cracks. First is a fatigue crack, second is hammer pumping or a pumping, third is the faulting, fourth is the spalling, fifth is the shrinkage cracking, sixth is the polished aggregate, then punch out, then failure of joint load transfer system, then there is a linear cracking, durability cracking, corner break, alkali aggregate reaction and pop outs these are the and also blow ups these are the various types of failures in the concrete pavement and we we have already discussed in our previous lecture these all types of failures okay but we have to study the stitching of concrete that's why i am again revising these failures of concrete pavement then repair and restoration of the rigid pavement is by crack filling when the crack is small, then crack sealing also, then stitching, then partial depth repair, and then full depth repair. Then tall bar retrofit is also there, 
and diamond grinding is also there. These are the different types of techniques to overcome various failures of concrete pavement and we are going to discuss in detail the stitching of concrete. What is a stitching technique? It is the repair technique to maintain the aggregate interlock at the point of cracking and to provide the added reinforcement and strain to the pavement. So it is nothing but it is going to provide the interlocking of the aggregate as well as to provide the reinforcement and to provide the strength to the concrete. Stitching is carried out for strengthening longitudinal cracks in the slab. It is used to stitch the longitudinal cracks in the slab. And stitching is also adopted to elevate the problem of omission of the tie bars during the construction, to tie the roadway lengths and to centerline longitudinal joints of the pavement. So it is used as an alternate treatment when tie bars are not provided. There are three types of stitching techniques are used. First is a cross stitching, second is a slot stitching and third is the U-bar stitching. What is the cross stitching? Holes are drilled at an angle, holes are drilled in the concrete pavement at an angle so that they are intersect the longitudinal crack or joint at the mid depth of the slab. If this is the slab and this is the crack, and this is the mid depth of the crack. Then cross stitching is carried out and dust is removed by compressed air and epoxy is injected into that holes. The epoxy grouting is done into that holes for cross stitching. In slot stitching, slots with the length no smaller than 600 mm are cut approximately perpendicular to the longitudinal joints or cracks using the slot cutting machine or walk behind saw. Slots are prepared by removing the concrete and cleaning the slot. And third is the U-bar stitching. These slots are in U-bar stitching also slot stitching is done. Slots are cut by using slot cutting machine and concrete is broken and removed by pneumatic hammer. And in this method anchoring action by the U-bar provides the most of restraining force. Proper back filling around the ends of U-bar is also important. So in that slot the U-bar is inserted and such a type of stitching is called as a U bar stitching. So for stitching of concrete, the various chemicals are used and Sikadur is one of the important uh, company which is, uh, which is used, uh, which are using various chemicals for that stitching of concrete. And these are the pictures of that Sikadur. Okay, and A and B, there are two different types of mixes used for this stitching. And this is a groove cutter. This groove cutter is used to making a groove or slot in the longitudinal crack. <coughs> and this groove cutter machine is look like this. Okay, then groove cutting. This is, these are the two laborers who are preparing and who are cutting that grooves into that cracks by sitting there. So this is a groove cutting and compressor is used for cleaning that groove. There is dust in that groove and that dust is removed by this type of compressors. Okay. Then drilling machines for steel rods. In that groove we have to drill the holes to insert the steel rods and such a type of drilling machine is used to drill the holes in that slot for the steel rods. And please look here, that steel rod is placed in that groove and it is inserted here and here. S such a U-bar uh, 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 bar stitching is done here and these slots are clear from the dust. Please look here, the steel reinforcement is placed or U-bars are placed in that groove. Then priming code. Sikadur 52 in A and Sikadur 50, 42 in A, B are the two types of priming codes are used. First of all, Sikadur 52 in A and Sikadur 52 in B mix very well and then fill the crack portion at the half level or half portion and then allow it settle for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so that A and B are mixed and placed in the groove at the half portion and allowed to settle 
for 15 to 20 minutes. Please look at this figure. These are the laborers who are carrying out this operation and this is the container which is used for mixing that sikadur A and B and this is the crack where stitching is to be done. Then finishing coat. First is the prime coat and second is the finishing coat. Finishing coat for that sikadur 52 in uh, compressor A and sikadur 42 in comp B. Now the second is the sikadur 52 in comp A and sikadur 42 comp B. Mix very well and then fill the crack portion on the top of the slab at finishing and then allow it settle for 20 to 25 minutes and and move the traffic on this portion so we can immediately move the traffic on the on that portion and these are the sikadur for 52 in and this is this is the sikadur 42 in and this is the a type of mix and this is the b type of mix these are the different types of mixes or epoxies used for filling that slots and this is stitched the portion of the concrete pavement look at this figure all these cracks are stitched in a nice manner and also <laughs> load is transferred with the help of u bar or steel reinforcement and finished in very proper way to allow the vehicular movement in very smooth manner and for more details and notes you may please contact my administrator on the phone number 9822604968 and email me on svkulkarni72 at the rate gmail.com and please my listen my lectures up to end to get some ideas clear about civil engineering and i am again requesting you to subscribe my channel and uh, please press the like button if you like these type of lectures and these lectures might be useful for practical civil engineers so thanking you bye bye